All right, so the great, the one, the only, Rob McNally, back in the hey. house. You guys have been asking for him for like two years, and unfortunately, uh, you don't ever have a break. Well, I mean, unfortunately for us, not for you. Right, right. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> and maybe unfortunately for everybody, because then, you know, they hear me playing guitar too much. I don't know. They don't seem to be slowing down. Uh, things haven't been slowing down. Things have been kind of full steam ahead, surprisingly, and good, uh, pleasantly surprising. Yeah, right? Just keeps yeah. going. If you yeah. guys don't know and aren't familiar with Rob, he is... I don't know. I guess you would say pretty much top of the heap here in Nashville. Session cat, the pinnacle. For the time being. Dude, anyway. it's been like 10 years. What are you talking well, about? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I just, I just, I like to talk about it like it's all coming to an end. Right. So. No. <laughs> that Maybe. way, I don't know. I'm not disappointed if it does. Okay. Or something. I don't know. Where are you going to go after that? Are you like producer guy? Oh, or what, what's, what? Hey, if, if somebody said, you're still the session dude, but you can have any other career full steam ahead that will be successful what's mm. the next frontier well i do have a full-on tracking studio at my house now so yeah I, I, awesome. I would love to uh you know start segueing into some production things a little yeah. bit more and or at least uh doing stuff at my house you know however that comes together yeah know. Are yeah. you a uh, producer role as far as recording, or are you like um, into songwriting and helping produce the actual song? Yes. All that. Yeah, any of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. any combination. Okay. Know, so, yeah. Well, that's what we're going to do today. Imagine yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, so before we get started, make sure to check out Rob's links down below. I'm going to leave. You got Instagram, YouTube, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. website? Uh, there is a website, but nobody goes to it. <laughs> it's so, I mean, I do all, if you want to know anything about what's going on, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, place. You got a band though. Is it Spotify or do you buy records? Yeah, yeah, do do yeah. We, we, well, I have stuff on Spotify. Spotify and Apple Music under okay. my name, and and I'm and I'm about to start releasing a bunch of new stuff. Um, yeah. Start putting out songs at a time. So, nice. Yeah. Okay, so around town, I think I, I keep hearing that you have an incredible knack for hooks, sounds, mm. and like really. Um, I mean, I know this this is kind of in the job description to serve the song. Yeah, yeah. But it seems like over and over again you are known for coming up with these really cool parts that people can latch onto like in a country tune or all sorts of different stuff. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of an art in and of itself. Not only that, but I like so. for sounds too, like just really cool, funky, weird sounds that kind of, uh, that take the song somewhere without having to add 20 more tracks of guitar. It's like, no, just have a cool sound here and there and the dynamics yeah, yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. So. He is incredible. And it was one of those, uh, what I really like best, and I think what, what it attracted me to your playing the most is first time I ever met you, you were just sitting in a room and it wasn't like, you know, you, you, oftentimes you hear people just ripping all day long and it was like, you were just creating music. And I was like, whoa, what's up with that? You know, like, yeah. so it, is that a shift in your think of playing? I mean, cause obviously you're, I've heard you do stuff that's terrifying on guitar. Like, so I know that you practice chops, but at some point, do you just let that go and just practice like, just like hook writing? Or I guess what I'm trying to say is we, he created this in like two minutes, this song that we did with these cool parts and all that stuff. And it was just like stuff that flowed. And it was like, God, how do you shift your playing into that yeah. frame of thinking? Because it's, uh, I mean, if you want to, I mean, I would say if you want to work as a musician, like that is like an invaluable skill you know yeah I mean? yeah absolutely to be able to yeah. just actually like come up with parts that yeah. serve the song rather than some guy just in the background all these just wailing or whatever yeah, yeah, like yeah how do you even where, where did that shift happen with you the reason i picked up guitar was to write songs yeah. it wasn't i didn't think i didn't even know there were guitar players <laughs> you know <laughs> willie nelson was my first guitar hero you know oh, dude the way he the way he would play and but the, the, the songs were the thing yeah you know it's like yeah great cool guitar playing totally. i just wanted to play i just wanted to write songs so my brain has always been geared towards like hey i'm gonna play something that just makes people go wow that's cool what's that you know just as different i guess i should break it down to like what happens on a daily basis with me like in, in the morning i get up super early yeah like i'm up very early and I'm, I'm sitting there with coffee and i'm actually working on chops yeah you know i'm actually just playing just just noodling and yeah. picking and uh, yep. you know working on my picking more and you know and all kinds of stuff like that and that's just kind of how i start my day and i guess 
that is just I have to get through that because then by the time I show up at a session that I don't know what it is nervous energy or whatever it is that starts my day where you know I I, I just um it switches over into like now I'm playing a song yeah all that stuff is out of my system sure. all that all that like you know just guitar playing for guitar playing yeah. sake or whatever which is great, but yeah. um, I don't know, somewhere in, in my, uh, I've always been that way, because uh, I've always written songs, so I've always been, uh, you know, my favorite players and uh, are people like Keith Richards and George Harrison and, and all these great guys that just had, they, they played a ton of great parts and hooks and riffs. Yeah. And those are the things I always remember. The, the, to me, the solos, uh, solo guitar solos are always great and you need them. Yeah. In, uh, in most, you know, applications, they can be very useful and effective. But, um, but I just got into this, uh, to me, the challenge of guitar playing is playing stuff that people want to hear over and over again. Yep. And guitar players love to hear flashy playing sure. and all that. And it's exciting for people in general. But the thing you always remember are the hooks. Yeah. The thing you always remember is the riff. Well, and even if the guitar playing's flashy, like even if it's like, you know, all the greats, you know, whether it's Van Halen or anybody that has has um, that technical ability, you can always remember they still don't just wank. Exactly. To wank. You know, exactly. I mean, it's it may always, be technically yeah. challenging, but it's still a memorable melody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, or serves the song in some yeah, way. Because yeah, I think yeah. even really great guitar players, like, you get bored if you go to a gig and somebody's just woo, 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 like, I'm just like, I'm out, like I can't. Yeah, it's impressive know? for a little bit, yeah. but it but it has to go somewhere. It has to go somewhere. <laughs> you know, it has to there's tension and release that yeah. has to happen, you know. Yeah. Okay, so Rob is gonna walk us through how to kind of do, this is obviously kind of like an alternative song, which is funny, because I've never heard you really play in this style. I don't know where this came yeah. from. This idea just kind of leaned that way, and it's like, you <laughs> just, know, you just go with it. Don't think about it too much. That's another important skill. You just don't second well, guess. Well, especially for you, because like I've seen you, um, like just pictures of sessions with everyone from like Bonamassa to George Benson to like blues greats to mm. all sorts of, I mean, if you listen to country music at all, like you know a giant chunk of what you're hearing is rob and you know some other guitar player yeah 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 but um being able to come up with hooks in all different styles yeah like is it does it start with a sound like do you i mean because you you're going to play over the same per chord progressions a lot obviously yeah yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. at some point um are you just like oh god i got to come up with some kind of a sound to like work off of to yeah yeah when i first started doing sessions those kind of songs uh well in in most of the time that i've been doing sessions the the trend has been you know four chords yeah. over and over again or whatever and and you know i mean i i figured out pretty quick that the only way i'm going to make a living out of this is figuring out how to completely come at this this approach songwriting wise five different way of being able to hear five different ideas as soon as you hear a song like a five different drastically different ideas yeah. you know like um um fitting sometimes sonically fitting sounds into things that you wouldn't expect to be there is a good tool to have well like that the deli uh, the the eq pedal like the weird okay yeah like like the very <laughs> like cool yeah, yeah like um like just for that real intro part you know uh so so like while you were getting set up yeah i was just kind of noodling around and yeah. i stumbled onto that and we both yeah knew that was cool yeah just just because it had a, a something you weren't expecting to hear yep. something a vibe about it and without the eq pedal it's still cool but yeah. not as cool yeah like not even in the same hemisphere and you take those slap backs off you know. oh i accidentally nice. put on some reverse slay even that's cool you know, it's just kind of a simple idea that really isn't anything, but when you put, when you add a little dimension to it or change the sound or give it yeah. like a mood. Yeah. Well, uh, it's, it's interesting that uh, delay almost gives it like a in your face space that's almost reverby, but not. And yeah. then that other thing is just like, it's almost like that weird work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of telephone. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And, 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 Okay, so I knew, uh, then we had this, the, 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 what I would call the hook part of the intro, like the, that'd be like a, 
pre down intro for a couple bars yeah. and then and then you hit them with this big yeah. wall of sound thing um and 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 that's making this sound small at the front yeah is what makes the big part sound huge yep. or b even bigger because in contrast you're coming from this really tiny pointed mid-range yeah. thing and then it opens up to this full frequency loud thing yeah and i'm not really louder it yeah. just really jumps forward because yeah. you're starting so small. So when you're when you're playing songs where the chords are just the same thing over and over yeah. again a lot of times or whatever, those are the tools you have to bring in, like super big shifts in dynamics, super, you know. Okay, so like yeah. what are what are some uh, things you can do? Like uh, just you, your pedal board isn't that complex, but you get no. a bunch of different sounds. So like what are some some cool things people can start messing around with? to start, you know, taking a basic idea and making it sound a little bit vibier. Like what what are some places to start? Like Well, I mean, you know, if I mean I mean obviously every song's different. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So so like knowing how to add things to taste is real. It's not like a big amount of things like uh just just putting a little reverb on something. Yeah. Just changes the way it feels to the listener. Very sure. Like, like an okay, example. like uh like if you were, you know, if you're like um uh, volume pedal helps too. You gotta turn that up. That's a that's a helpful hint. Have you ever done this before? Come on, Rob. No. <laughs> Where's my guy? Where's my volume pedal guy? Jesus. Anyway, all right. So like like let's say you're doing like you know like some kind of uh, groove bass part like. So if you did that, you know, that that actually sounds good dry and maybe that's the right thing. But then if you start going. You know, what, you add that little bit of reverb. Of reverb that? uh, that's just the 63 spring in the M9. You know, yeah. that's not even anything super fancy. You could, you know, if you have an amp great. with a reverb, yeah. you can add it there. I don't know. Just just it, it changes the mood of it. Yeah. You, know? you do some cool delay stuff too. Like what are some some delay tricks? Uh well, like for instance, in that in that song uh that we that we recorded at the beginning. <coughs> I tried to get like a 16th note. You love slap back delay, I, huh? Well, I like it because it gets in and out of the way. Yeah. And it's exciting. It's exciting sounding to yeah. me. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. It's rhythmic, but it's not the edge thing that we've heard how a million times. How many, uh, like, feet, what's the feedback? Like, if you just hit it. Oh, so like, yeah, literally just one, you know, yeah. um, it, it, you know, I mean, like a lot of people use rhythmic delays, like, uh, let's see, you know, a lot of people do the, uh, dotted, you know, like the edge thing that we've heard, you know, people do forever, you know, I mean, that that's cool, yeah. but, but in my mind, we've heard that so many times and it's so great. Yeah. Um, but but we just heard it. You yeah, know, I'm I just try and figure out other ways to come at the same same things that people typically like you to do yeah. in a in a you know a commercial sounding song or whatever. But just just come at it just any way different. You sure. Can. Like but and that can be like you know. Uh, uh you, you know picking up a whole different guitar like a, but what what does it sound like on a 12 string what would the, we don't have one here but yeah. that that could sound cool on a 12 yeah. string like wow that's that's not sure. what i thought would play that part <laughs> right and then it's the thing that makes that part yeah you know how do you come up with a hook and like in in this particular instance when you heard the you know when you came up with that yeah like yeah. Walk us through how you would create a hook like that and like what you actually did. Okay, okay. Well, uh, what I'm thinking of it as the main hook part was the, uh, you know, that yeah. that part that came uh -huh. in. So, and that's coming off of that filtered part where, where yeah. it's like got that cool, like, a, you know, that thing that's that such... happens, lets you know something big is about to happen. Yeah. So, uh, 
I, I I switched to my neck pickup okay. because we're going single note and kind okay. of up high, so yeah. I wanted it to still be thick. Okay. So that helps. Yeah. Uh, fuzz yeah. too. F fuzz is on. I'm using okay. a basic audio Scarab Deluxe. I love that pedal. Those things um, sound fantastic. They, they are really good. Yeah. Um, and then um, uh, let's see. Uh, with the slap back on there, it kind of creates this smear with it. Like okay. I thought of this, like uh, like you know those great old car songs with the. Uh, keyboard part like oh, the dude. lead synth totally. parts like just what i needed be a perfect example. i'm so glad you mentioned that one of the greatest like guitar parts bands ever oh yeah yeah elliot easton so yeah. freaking good. i know i know there's <laughs> okay. so much so much great stuff there if you yeah. haven't listened to that 80s band. period steve stevens all those oh, yeah, guys yeah, are just man. so good anyways all right so yeah so i was kind of thinking like uh, like this could be a synth part you know or it, it, oh, or make yeah. the guitar sound a little bit like a lead synth right 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 <laughs> Now, I milk that bend at the end mm -hmm. against the two minor chord. So you're on the play? There we go. Okay. So the chords are uh, A, F sharp, minor, uh, D, and B minor. Yeah. That's how I'm thinking of these chords, even though we really didn't exploit any of the thirds. Yeah. You yeah. knew what the tonality yeah. was. So, so um, yeah, let's play the hook one time, you know, uh, through, and I'll stop and talk about how I'm playing it to, for the right effective thing. It's like all the way through. Like okay. Two, three, four. Okay, so I just changed one note at the end, the, yeah. the last time through, because it felt like something needed to change rather than playing it all the same every time. Yeah, so is that what you do is you, you take like three notes and you repeat them and then just kind of vary up what, how you're ending the bar or whatever? Is that yeah, like yeah, I mean, it's just it's just a feel thing on that. Like, you know, just playing a melody that you would sing uh, and, and, then, and then the last time through, like putting a new point of interest to, okay. to make it like a four bar phrase instead of just a repeated two bar phrase. So when you, when you're in the studio and you hear um, hear the demo of a song. Are, are you like humming to yourself to like try to come up with a hook part? Sometimes, yeah. Or, or I mean, is it yeah, literally that's, just that's like the brain that it's coming from? Yeah. You know, whether I'm physically humming or not. No, you know, I know, but like yeah, in your mind, like yeah, yeah, that's like humming. A yeah, yeah, melody. absolutely, okay. absolutely. Yeah, that's okay. it. And uh, so you know, um, I it, it where you put vibrato and where you don't is kind of a, an important thing. So like oh, in that. Even... Like I kind of hung out on the front half of that note before I really started to shake yeah. it, you know? And sometimes doing it like uh, like I, what I could have done and could be interesting is like. Oh, there's yeah. no vibrato on that bend. Like a yeah. lot of times guitar players will have the tendency to default yeah. to shaking a note, you know? Always, yeah. But I'm trying to bend really slowly to that note and kind of make you make the listener create the tension of like, is he gonna hit the note or not? <laughs> and you do hit the note, yeah. but, but you just take your time getting there. And I think that's kind of sometimes something that just makes people listen longer because they want to see if you can do it. Yeah, you know, if yeah, you're yeah. gonna do it, right. you know what? You know, because we all you don't ever want somebody who's listening to something to think they know what's gonna happen and then that happens because yeah. it's a letdown. Yeah, it's like. If there's yeah, it's no, like I've heard if that there's before. no little Easter egg about it, yeah. it, it, you, it doesn't keep pulling the listener along. Okay. So, you know, that's kind of, and, and you know, you can, you could like do it like uh, if I did the four, the entire four bar phrase, play with me. I'm not going to use vibrato on the second time I hit the, one of these notes that okay. you might expect. Okay. So two, three, four. Yeah. Like not putting that vibrato in there is some of the most uncomfortable shit in the world because yeah. you want to do it. You want to hear it, yeah. But, but I, you know, I remember hearing Neil Young on a record on some song where, where he just hit the note and he held it like as sure as 
just straight, <laughs> no vibrato, nothing, no guitarism about it at all. And it just, it was like, that's the coolest tension. So it's just little tricks that you can inject into a very, what we think is a simple, simple idea. Yeah. Makes it unique. So in that particular instance, does it help to have something like when you want to not have vibrato? Does that like the pet, like the fuzz help with the sustain or like? That and the neck pickup. Okay. In this instance, because you're going to, your neck pickup, I think neck pickups will hang on longer you know, on a single note with a fuzz or a distortion. Really? Or, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I the the bridge pickup starts to give out sooner. Okay. The because it's not is uh, it's they're they just the neck pickup just drives things a little yeah. bit more, right? Speaking of which, the coolest pickup setup ever. Yeah, yeah. Telly with a humbucker. Yeah, this is my Jeff Sin Telly, Telly that I've had forever, and it it's one of my main guitars. If you guys don't know about Sin guitars, I don't know how many he makes anymore, but like his... He's still making a lot. Is he? he but he can you will. custom order anymore, or is it just like whatever he makes? Boy, that I can't answer, Yeah, but I know he's still making a lot of guitars. Fan. Yeah. Fantastic yeah, guitars. Really good. Like, I have several. So, you all do. Yeah. And it's like, God, there's another good, ah, oh, there's another good one. I know, man. I don't know. But this thing is one of the ones that uh, people have seen me play the most, probably. Yeah. I see you play and this, on everything from like Bonamassa to, I mean, all, all I mean, you can tell because this look, is, look so, at this yeah, yeah, I, yeah, it's worn down in here in the body. That just kind of happened. I don't know. But uh, man, yeah, I, you know, I've had fly dates where I've just taken this guitar yeah. and, and I mean, it's amazing how many sounds you can actually get out of just this basic setup. Well, um, I mean, a P90 and a Tele pickup, it's like kind of the ultimate, like... Yeah, yeah, Th this this gets you sort of into, like, Gibson range a little bit. Yeah. Um, What's the middle sound like? Oh, the middle is really cool. It's it, I like it because it's real skanky sound. That's it, totally clean. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, if you hit it with... Uh, oh, dude. It's just what, got some snarl to what it. What pickups are those? Uh, okay, so back here is a Don Mayer bridge, Don Mayer bridge pickup, and okay. I and I, I have a few different. I love his bridge tele pickups because I don't sound, think I've ever heard of that. Like, they're, they're great. Okay. Um, uh, I don't remember which one it is, but okay. it's it's one that's a little bit hotter than what's in a classic tele. Okay. Um, it's not the hottest one he makes, yeah. but, and then this is a Lawler P90. Oh, I love the Lawlers, man. Yeah, yeah, they're cool. Um, you know, uh, Junkie. I've always liked uh, Fralin P90s. I love uh, Malfitano, Ma Malfitino, what, what are those? Um, however that's pronounced. Yeah. Those are great P90s. I have those in a couple of like juniors and stuff. And uh, um, But the Lawler just sounded great in this guitar. You yeah, know? is that what you just kind of, match pickups of the guitar until you find what yeah works good. yeah if i'm not hearing what i what i think the guitar is capable of putting out then i'd start that's when i start like trying different pickups or something you should have like a big huge giant arsenal of pickups at your oh, house man speakers and pickups <laughs> man those dude are, you speakers you do have a ton of those oh uh, you can check out a pedal you know in a store yeah you can check out an amp a guitar in a store but you can't check out pickups or until they're in your guitar yeah. or in the situation you're going to use them in and you can't do that with speakers a lot of times yeah because you change your speakers out of the step a lot it seems like I went through a long period of it. I think I've kind of settled on a few things that I know work with yeah. most things I would use. Yeah. Now. <sighs> yeah. But you get killer tones though, so. Thank you. It's paid off. Thank you. Okay, so hooks. Uh, maybe something you can hum. Yeah. In the brain. Do you, is that a good way to start maybe? Like listening yes. to a chord progression and then just start like trying to hum something in your head and then recreate that on guitar and then just kind of Tweak that, like with what you're saying, maybe vibrato, maybe don't do yeah. it. I mean, obviously, it'd probably help if you record yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to come up yeah, with. Yeah, listening, listening to what you do uh, when you're learning. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it's all that. Um, yeah, if you're a singer at all, you've got a leg up on most, probably, uh, as far as hook writing, because um, you're going to naturally sing things. 
And if you can pick those out on a guitar and play them kind of like you sing them, like yeah. with some inflections that you would s sing. Yeah, them right, right, right. You know? That makes sense. Yeah. What about the uh, when you come into the you, you did that part and then there's like a boom, like you do oh yeah yeah fuzz, so like so so like okay when we were in the uh, coming from the filtered part. So, so, so <laughs> very grunge, very so 90s, awesome, you know, um, and, and what, what that, that's, that's a combination of things. So okay. that, so, so what you have to be good at doing is turning the, uh, filtered sound off at the okay. exact same time you turn the fuzz on. Okay. So double step. So it's like a, you know, you Good almost got to be live. sitting or yeah. have a MIDI set up if you're doing it live, I guess, or some way of doing, sure. being able to do all that, you know. And what I'm doing on the guitar without the fuzz on. So my thumb is actually hitting the low uh, G note or the flat seven. Yeah. Um, on the third fret on the low string. And then on the D string at the fourth fret, I'm bending this up a half step to, you know, from. You know. God, that's so much tension. Like Right, right. It's the right kind of tension. And you don't want to do this, that thing. Yeah. I intentionally tried to make it a little bit out of tune. Okay. Don't bend right to the note. And then the slapback actually smears it even more and I think creates that dynamic. Okay. Because if you take that off, you just. Yeah. It's different, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it just has a different feel. So then you add the fuzz. Does that it's delay have mod, mod on it too? What's that? Does that delay have mod on it too? Like a modulation? Well, well it's the analog with mod uh, patch in the yeah. M9. Um, I freaking love that. Dude. The M9 sounds so freaking good. Well, they still do. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, there are things that like probably sound better. I mean, you know, uh, the HX stuff is yeah. is pretty high quality stuff, but. The workflow on the M9 for what I do yeah, is so, so simple. easy. I can get yeah, that sound like really quick. Yeah, well, it's, it's on every one of your guys' board. It like. still is. I mean, uh, there. You know, some people have gotten down the new uh, HX stuff like really fast. Yeah. And I, I just I have that at home when I yeah. can take more time. But I this the workflow on an actual session. Yeah. This is better. You know, for me. Yeah. Um, and it still sounds great to me. You know, I can I can use it and make it sound good. So um, you go from uh, filtered sound to the fuzz sound and then into like a hook. Now, like, obviously, like you've played a million records, mm. you've toured with a million people, you've played in a million bands. Like, obviously, that is going to come into play in your ability to hear things in like, oh, yeah, like not not I don't want to say borrow melodies, but almost like be able to create them easier because you've played so many different types of melodies. Yeah, yeah. Like, is that a huge part of Hook creation is learning like a bunch of different songs and then yes yeah know. and listening to a lot of different music i mean that's really where you should probably start if yeah. you don't you know like anything you've ever heard anybody talk about that's great from yeah. any genre is going to have hooks yeah you know that's the thing you'll notice all the way through i mean and it doesn't matter if we're talking about old blues records or we're talking about classic rock or we're talking about soul records or anything the the parts are amazing throughout music. You Led know? Zeppelin, any of that. Oh yeah, yeah. Any any of the Mount Rushmore of classic rock people, yeah. and I mean, you know, reggae. I mean, yeah. you know, just just everything. Um, James Brown is a perfect example of how to put together uh, parts that that like if you take one thing out, there's a hole there where it's just not as exciting. They're crafted in a way um, to where it all has to be there, and exactly that, and like. Playing when you need to play and and not playing when you're not yeah. supposed to be playing. I don't think enough you know? people uh, realize the effectiveness of just playing nothing. Yeah. You're yeah. dropping out for a verse. Like like uh, when we did that piece, you know, yeah. we were playing where you were doing the high, uh, you know. And, 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 uh, and when we did the first verse, because that verse was longer than this, what the second verse was, um, I, I, it, it became apparent to me that like the best way to make the second part of that verse not seem boring was hey don't do that in the first half mm -hmm. you know so you laid out and it like gave all this space for just a yeah so that's that's like a that's like 
its own hook in the verse and then you come in and make it special for the second half it's so simple too yeah yeah like it's just, just a simple little thing that just gives you a little nudge in towards where we're building which is going to be the chorus okay you know? so do you find that you do that um all the way like throughout like verse one's very sparse verse two typically has one extra little element a lot of times and that kind of that works yeah that's a thing that works um you know, it depends on how long these sections are. Like a lot of times we see in modern music where the second verse is a shorter version okay. of the first verse. Yeah. So you don't have as much time, but you do need some different element. And sometimes that's like, you know, what we could have done is yeah. like taking this away. And we could have like, you know, like uh, dropped down to like, you know. Like that would have sounded cool. Same chords, but different yep. different treatment of it. You know, that you're just looking for anything. In, uh, let's do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hold we, on, let me get my pick. Oh, oh try, try, yeah, like, try uh, something different. Let's like, come from let's come from the uh, the turnaround before it to see if that would be like the hard. Turn. Turn. Yeah, the big part. Okay. The big part. Two, Two three. Like that, it's you still know it's the song, yep. but it's like it's not the same as the first verse, you know. Yeah, little things like that, you know. Um, Do you, it sounds like on some of the the parts you you like to kind of jump uh, from like octaves. Oh or, yeah, or yeah, like, yeah. Thir like root thirds or like you know pieces of chords. That, yeah, yeah, that yeah, kinda, yeah. To kind of jump. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so we went through this long phase, and this is kind of like hopefully out of style now <laughs> enough to where people won't ask you to do it. But but we had like all the oh I don't know I don't know kind of where this started maybe Ed Sheeran or yeah. some, some kind of but a lot of pop people were doing this on guitar where it's just the tenths. Okay. Those two notes okay. of a chord. Yep. Yeah, you know, oh, we've yeah. heard that a million times. Oh, yeah. So so I started introducing the fifth back into yeah. that. I mean, you know, it's not terribly different, but it's yeah. different enough. It gives yeah. you a chance. You can arpeggiate through it. Yeah. Create a little bit more like uh, interesting subdivision okay. if you want. Yeah. You know? and, then, and then, you know, I mean, uh, one of the greatest guitar parts of all time, Message in a Bottle, oh, Andy totally Summers, dear. right? But you could... You could you know, you yeah. can add that ninth in the different chords. You know, you do anything. That you just awesome. add, and all you're doing is changing one note or a concept. So you're just introducing one little thing into a simple idea, but it makes all the difference. But how are you able to do that, like on the spot? and just uh, do it right the first time. You do it a lot and you fail <laughs> miserably for you. You're just gonna look like, dude, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, I didn't get into session playing until like pretty, kind of later in my yeah. career, I guess. You know, I didn't, a lot, you know, and I think, I think, I think that was good for me. I came in the door with more, a little bit more musical maturity than I would have if I yeah. just hit the ground running trying to get sessions in my sure. 20s. Okay, so effects for cool parts, yeah, dynamics, you, yeah. mm -hmm. big like big huge chorusy sound and stuff and then drop down to back down to kind of let let the song rest a little bit. Yeah. And then uh you did some ripping solo stuff. Well, and and I was trying to do okay, so that was a lot longer solo than you would ever yeah. hear in any be a good way to close the night out, whatever. though. What's that? Yeah, if you, yeah. If the artist is walking off stage, <laughs> and you want to, you play. gotta take it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. No, but um, yeah. And I kind of tried to do come up with some different. Like I treated it in sections in my mind. Like um, come up with a, with a cool opening motif that that you do twice. Okay, what's a motif like? Well, that? like uh, what I did on there. Three, four.
Okay, wait. So, like, where does that even? Are you taking pieces of chords? You're like, is okay, that just what you're hearing. Well, uh, I just thought it'd be cool to do these wide interval jumps, kind okay. of, and create it like a like a two bar pattern that you repeat over again. I guess yeah. that's two bar pattern. Yeah, yeah. So, so it was like it started BB King, right? Yeah. We've heard him go <laughs> a million times, like you know, or whatever go up and hit that. So I don't know that that just seemed like a cool, like exciting way to start it. I just started up here on the high A note up there on the 17th fret on the high E string. Yeah. And I just slid way down to yeah. the minor third, okay. which created some tension because it's a major sounding progression kind oh, of. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to do that, go back and forth between major and minor, you know, and so it like, It's, they're the same, there's just uh, yeah. two notes the whole time. E, uh, A and C, you know, okay. like. A, C, A, C, A. No way. Same right. notes, yeah. just two notes, but all in different registers. Yeah. Find some cool rhythmic punctuation to do and or cool phrasing and, and then, um, Simple idea, right? Yeah. But hard to execute on the fly. Yeah, dude, for so, sure. So, I mean, it's harder than it seems, like. I mean, you gotta be able to jump wide intervals on the neck. Yeah, you know, hence be noodling able to in the morning. Yeah, 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 right, right. <laughs> and, and, you know, um, and so that's like the first motif, and I did that twice, so the, the listener hears that twice and goes, oh, okay, and now, but now you're ready for something yeah. else. Okay. So the second motif was like this uh, three, four. So, so, okay. Now, I, I meant to play, I don't know if I did play it this way, but the way I meant to play it yeah. was sliding around. I was thinking like, what, well, I don't have a slide, yeah. but what if I did it like I was playing slide where I just relied on yeah. my ring finger. Okay. Do that all with one finger. Yeah, if you guys, <laughs> we gotta get you in here to play slide one of these days Wait, Yeah, we should do a slide video. <laughs> oh, good. I don't know how I resolved it on the thing we did yeah. earlier, but you know, you just resolve it in any way because the meat of the hook is this. So, so what that does okay. is that that phrase is constantly jumping the downbeat. So what does so that mean? So rhythmically, well, like three, one, two, three, four. Okay. You yeah. know, it's it's hitting it's hitting ahead of the downbeat with okay. a re res the resolve of each phrase. Yeah. And I. Th think that's just one way you can create some excitement is okay. not squaring it up so much because yeah, we could have gone like a yeah it's not the same it's at just all. not as funky yeah like it's do, not do as both. Exciting. here we go do. two three four It's just, it's just, you know. Creates a bounce. But yeah, yeah, it's not, I don't think of it as funk music. Yeah. But I like the punctuation that you hear uh, when somebody's playing in a funky way. Punctuation? Punctuation. <laughs> There we go. That's our new band. <laughs> That's, our new That's our new corporate <laughs> band coming to a wedding near you. Exactly. Punctuation. Uh, oh, man. Okay. Anyway. There's a lot that we could go over in the end. Um, you... you, you Stick to a theme, and then you kind of just start branching out from there, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, there were two themes that went on twice. Yeah. Kind of gave the listeners something like, okay, we're 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 this that that's something I could probably play. Yeah. That's something I can definitely sing. Yeah. And then um, and then at, at, at that point in the solo, then you can go off and play a little guitar. Sure. Yeah. But I still even tried to keep these phrases in some kind of hook or some kind of yep. leaving space in between yeah. the phrases. Still and, really rhythmic it too. Yeah, yeah. Like in your approach to it. Like, yeah. Because sometimes you'd play some notes and then it was like, it was like space and then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Space is like my favorite 
thing to use because because it really does uh when you have the idea that comes and it's time to play it it's just that's what makes it that's what makes it better that's what makes it you know like like the fact that you weren't playing anything right up to the perfect moment you know that's that's always the absent makes yeah. the riff grow fonder dude <laughs> That's our band <laughs> punctuation <laughs> motto. Okay, so there's another thing you did though that I have to know what what the hell it was. Like you were sliding around. Okay, yeah, that's that's something that that's a technique that I've 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 uh, seen other players do. Yeah. I didn't invent it, but no, but it's definitely a Robism. I've seen you do it. You do it really I, good. I like I like sneaking that in. So yeah. okay, w well, in this example, it was like um, uh, what was it? It was uh, let's see. Um, you want me to play? Yeah. yeah. Okay, two, three, four. <laughs> that's what it was. So, okay, that's... <laughs> Where does that even come into your vocabulary? Uh, you know what? I, 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 I don't know. Is that like uh, a slide? Like maybe from slide? Pro or like probably was the germ of trying to trying to play like I had like I had a slide, you know? Okay. Uh, but at times when I didn't trying yeah. to figure out a way to do that. But, but it's also like, I don't know where that comes from. It's almost like some kind of Eastern instrument. Yeah. Or, or, not like uh, a sitar or something that, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, it, I, I don't know, man. I just, I what just, is it? so, so, okay. That ended up being sort of pentatonic, pentatonic notes. Okay. Um, a pentatonic, um, uh, Right? Are you just so, going down so, the scale but slide? Yes, yeah. So that's all it is. Um It's like a super fast slur almost. Yeah, yeah, that's that's and why you know, I mean you are having to slide some wide intervals or, or, or wider than you would normally yeah. slide. <laughs> you know, and, and so I mean, it's awesome. something, it's something, I mean, I just tried to get into like, yeah. okay, you know, pentatonic notes are the notes we kind of want to hear a lot of times, mm -hmm. but God, I'm so, you know, I mean, you know. Yeah. You know. Okay. That's another, that, that, that's just fine. That's yeah. great playing too. But, but, uh, you've got some really interesting choices of intervals. I mean, obviously, cause you've probably played blues for a million years in your life, but like, you have a really cool um, way you jump around in pentatonic scales that even though you're playing pentatonic, it does not sound like they're just pentatonic. Ways. That's That's been my uh, real focus about playing pentatonic yeah. stuff. Yeah, like can we jam years. that and just kind of like you did some killer like mixing major and minor stuff in there, but like just just let me play for a little bit and so so i can like kind of show them what i'm talking about okay you, i hope i can I conjure no, that you, up but you, yeah 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 you, you do here i'm gonna get us some I don't know if any of that was any good. Yeah, but, but so what, what do you... Uh, like, how, where, does, where does that even, like, where does, where does that come from? Like, uh, and what are you doing? Like, are you just jump picking I'm, different I'm animals? just I'm just not playing the next note in the scale. I'm jumping several notes ahead and then coming back. I'm just toggling from a lower note to a higher note. Um, the, uh, you know, there's, there's that uh, jazz players do this a lot. And... Uh, uh, I was talking to Lyle Brewer, uh, another great guitar player that okay. I know is, he, and he, he, and he kind of, uh, uh, taught me a little bit about, uh, octave displacement where, where you, uh, like if you've got a major scale, you know, so like, like you're playing the, playing these notes in different octaves, okay. like, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. You know who does this all the you time know. too is Rick Beato. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, it's, yeah. Again, yeah. it's it's something horn players have done for forever. You know, and 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 guitar players, classical music. Do it. You know, yeah. Sources. It's 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 all it's all. Um, so so I just kind of started uh, trying to figure out ways to 
just jumble up uh, the same notes we're all playing most of the time so that it, it's the same notes but it's not it's not in the same order yeah it's just it's just all out of order and then you and it come, can be random and could be do you just come back to a uh, kind of a familiar phrase at that point yeah 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 so you can't just survive on that you got it you got to <laughs> You got to give the listener like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> it's just going to be weird all the time. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, just try and like bring it back to a v very familiar move. You yeah. know, like uh, you know, like yeah. just anything. You know, just just yeah. You just giving them a little handhold through the scary part of the <laughs> haunted house. <laughs> this will end soon, I promise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, let me do one, one more time. Here we go. Oh, oh, doing that again? Yeah, just, just whatever. Just freestyle because you're here. Too. Yeah. I know you don't get to do that very often. I just want to yeah, yeah. provide that for you. Well, That's thank space. you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> that you. platform where people love jamming. Yeah. Okay. So takeaways. Did mix up the sounds. Yeah. Yeah. So you, maybe, maybe take, take a typical part that you might be just jamming on, but like mess up the sound somehow. EQ pedal, slap yeah, back, yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dynamics. Yeah. That's, that's the biggest thing probably. Simplicity. Mm-hmm not playing yeah so try not playing a little bit so like yeah, lay out play a little back. bit okay whenever you don't know what to do just yeah. like do nothing yeah what's the know. biggest let me okay so biggest lesson you learned ever doing session playing playing guitar oh man what's the one thing you're like oh yeah okay uh, you know you know what uh this probably can apply to anybody uh session playing or not uh if you're in a band and okay. you're too loud you're gonna, you're not gonna be able to hear if what you're doing is fitting in. So like in my headphones, getting in my headphone mix together took some time to learn how to do because, yep. you know, like I would, you always wanna hear yourself really loud to make sure you're executing everything perfectly. Am mm -hmm. I playing right, you know? Well, as soon as you turn up, I, I found that when I make myself too loud, I tend to tend to rush Okay. a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I also like, my uh if i'm if if i'm the loudest thing and i can't hear something cool that somebody else is doing that i want to help accentuate sure it goes by and i don't know and i just played over this great idea that was happening elsewhere <laughs> in the band stomping. Right? i mean we we all come into this there's there's so many things about session playing you can't learn until you're on the job yeah it just is that way. Well, and critical, so, and you have to listen back critically too. Yeah, yeah. When you walk in the control room to hear what you just did, you know, uh, you you're either going to feel like a hero or or terrible because oh my god, I just played yeah. over everything cool everybody else did. You know, I completely agree with that. Though that I can't, um, I don't like hearing myself loud. Like mm. I, I have the drums and all that stuff way louder. For me, it's just rhythm wise, just so I can hear what's going on. But there's other players like when I would go to work with Tim, he plays his stuff really loud. And I'm yeah. like, God, I don't know how people do yeah, that. Yeah, there are some people that can do that. Yeah. Um, but but I found what works for me. The biggest yeah. lesson I learned was uh, turning myself down to the point where I know what I'm doing. I can I can hear what I'm doing. And I can feel that I'm doing it in the pocket. Yeah. And right. So that's all you need. And yeah. then, and then at, a lot of times, um, if you, you know, I come to, like I said earlier, you, you want to have, have the ability to have a, a five different ideas for every song you hear. Mm -hmm. Um, but you also have to have the ability to divorce those ideas immediately. Yeah. As soon as you hear someone else in the band doing something that 
either they're excited about in the control room or it just is better than all the things you had yeah. or was similar to what you had, but tweaked in a way that's better. So, I mean, it, you or can the take talk it. back. Uh, that was great. Um, that's what what great. else you got? Yeah. Yeah. What, hey, let's try some other things. Maybe some other guys. No, but, um, guys. <laughs> no, but um, you know, um, a lot of times you don't have, there are times where you don't know what you're going to play. You don't have an idea. And you walk in there and before we sit down, people start messing with sounds and you kind of get a general idea for what they're going to do because you're hearing what they're dialing up in the headphones. And, and that, in that second, you get the idea because you hurt, you listen to them. How do you guys deal with that kind of pressure? That's freaking crazy. I don't look at it as pressure. I mean, yeah. what's going to happen? Yeah. Nobody dies if I don't play. No, right totally. Thing. No, I get it. It's but not, like... a, you know, there's a producer here in town, Paul Worley, I used to work with all the time. Great guy. And he, he always, he, I always heard him say, there's no such thing as a musical emergency. And that takes the pressure off the room. It's like, yeah, you're right. Nobody, you know, yeah. I'm not performing a life threatening surgery here. Yeah, totally. Not, you know, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, we can suck. It's, yeah. I'm, I'm okay with sucking on the first couple takes if, if we're working on a record sure. and everybody's trying to find the, the, the vibe of the song because you've got all these collision of instincts happening and the yeah. things are jumbled. So, you I mean, you know, if you're working on a record, you have the time to sort that out. Do they, do they look to you and say like, Rob, you kind of take the... A lot of times, yes. A lot of times we'll be like, hey, we, 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 need, we need a hook at the beginning of the song. Like maybe we have a demo we're working for them mm -hmm. from and, and maybe, they, maybe they like the hook on the demo, but they, but they want to change something about it. So sometimes the idea is like in place. Wow. You know, yeah. but then other times it's like, oh, we love everything about the song, but we hate the guitar hook on the demo. Try something different. Go, go somewhere else with it. We just want, we just want to move that out of the picture, you know? A lot of times you have your assignment, but... Are you exhausted at the end of the day? I feel like all that creative output, are you somebody's just like, oh my God. <laughs> if it's a, if it's, if there's three sessions in a day and it, it, particularly demo sessions, uh, by the end of a three session demo day, yeah. Um, I don't real I don't feel tired until the drive home. And then when I'm sitting in place and I don't have to be doing anything <laughs> except driving home, yeah, totally. it sets in. Because you have been outpouring a lot of creative energy and yeah. you're sitting in a room with loud sounds. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, uh, I, you know, a, a big lesson I learned and in, in get get headphones that isolate really well because you're in the room with the drums 90 percent of the time. Yeah. And they're just bashing away, which causes you, if you don't have isolation, you're turning your headphones up All so that, loud. Yeah. That you're killing your ears yeah. you're not going to have a long career if you do that so get really good headphones that block out that outside sound so you can listen low i yeah. listen so quiet almost everybody else but you are getting this yeah the sound waves are hitting you all day long you know i mean we don't think about it it's not like manual labor per yeah. se yeah, yeah, yeah but there's a lot of energy being used all day long you know and <laughs> that's crazy you get in the car you drive home and some days it's like yeah i'm tired i'm i don't want to hear another sound yeah just roll yeah. down the window <laughs> yeah 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 did you just do this for rolling down the yeah. window well, our jeep has it like you know it's funny is that uh, we just got a new car and it was like I, we got in the car and it was like Whoever ordered the car in the beginning is just like, I don't want anything electronic, just like bare, but like, the, you know, you have yeah. navigation and all that other stuff, but he's like, I just window crank. And it was so funny. Now I go back to it and I'm like, I kind of like that. It's like well, going back to high school. You know what I noticed about when you did that, you did it way up here yeah. because the last time you did that, you were probably this tall. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, all right, you guys. So we're going to, I'm going to try to twist Rob's arm to get him back here a bunch, but Seriously, if you have questions about, you know, bands or sounds or any of that kind of stuff, I can't think of a better person to to have on the channel that really, I mean, this is all he does for a living, both live playing, you have toured with Seeger, he's toured with all sorts of huge acts too. So the experience level and being able to help you guys uh, with stuff like that, whether again, it's sounds or playing or how to play with other people, any of that stuff, Make sure you let us know in the comment section because this is literally, you know, he's never going to brag on himself, but one of the top guys in the whole planet as far as session guitar players are concerned. And so if you want to know how to do that kind of stuff, he is definitely somebody that can, that can help you out.
So make sure to check out his links down below. You have a YouTube channel. Yes. And he's posting more on Instagram, which yeah, is nice. Yeah, yeah, well, it's, you know. Instagram, know. I'll leave all his links down yeah. below in the description box. Make sure you check that out for sure, 100%. And then also support the cause. I get to bring all these players in here by your guys supporting brettpapa.com. Hopefully we can drag you in there one of these days, get a little master class or something yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. But uh, anyways, that's what supports everything and that's what keeps me being able to do all this for you guys. So check that stuff out down there. There's lots of different players, not just myself, but lots of great instructors down there as well. You guys are amazing, Rob. Thank you so thank much you. once again for coming back in. We'll catch you next time.